So dear Dhamma practitioners, be comfortable yourself and relax your body. Keep your back straight and neck head, neck head straight in one line and your right palm on your left. So gently close your eyes and bring your attention to this bell sound. And while you're focusing to the sound, you can mentally relax your body, relax your mind and relax your breathing with your thoughts. Do nothing extra. Just follow the sound, please. Namo tas bhagavato arato samma sambuddhas Namo tas bhagavato arato samma sambuddhas Namo tas bhagavato arato samma sambuddhas Homage to the blessed one, the exalted one, the fully enlightened one. So dear Dhamma practitioners, when it comes to meditation, it is very important to understand the structure of your practice. And because as you know, there are many informations you can find regarding meditations. So when it comes to meditation and when it comes to Buddhism, there is a word called bhavana. So the very root of the meditation. So the bhavana, is the very connotation of the bhavana is the bhaveti kusaladami aseviti vaddeti bhavana. And when we translate it to English, it's kind of like the idea you can get the cultivation of profitable skills in your mind. The cultivation or the development of your mind is called bhavana. So the development of your mind with the profitable way, not in profitable way. Because in in very, very nature of the mind, there is nothing to develop in profitable way. Because with our eye, ear, nose, tongue, body, mind, we always bring informations. And also we have already inbuilt desires, which we call sanskara or the mental formations. That mental formations always related to greed, hatred, and the delusion. So what is the profitable way means? What is the development of mind means? When you develop your mind related to the loving kindness, generosity, compassion, wisdom. And at the same time, when you purify your mind from greed, hatred and the delusion itself, the mind start to get into it's pure nature because the mind itself covered from the greed, hatred and the delusion. So the development mean it is you, you know, need to bring something out, uh, bring something from out. Only thing is what, what already there you have to slowly release and detach, get out. That purification itself will help you to, to understand what is happening within yourself. What is this life mean? What is the experience mean? What is the mind mean? What is the body mean? What is this environment mean? 
So that understanding will help you to come to the point to understand who you are or another way we call it self-realization. So the self mean it here, our body, our mind, our thought patterns, our think, the way we think, our feelings, these desires, emotions, our awareness or the consciousness in the surface level, which we depend with the ideas and another way, name and form, this all together come the self. So this self realization is the ultimate goal. Why we have to realize the self? Because otherwise, the whatever the experience come to us, if you understand it, understand it in a wrong way, incorrect way. What is that? It is you come to the idea of permanent self. And once you have the permanent self-centered idea, what will happen? Anything can happen. Anything can happen in profitable way. That means the, the idea of self-centered minds or the permanent existence of the, the self will provide the facility, environment, or the nourish, the greed, hatred, and the delusion with your bodily, verbally, and mentally action. So once you recognize in the, in the bottom level, in the depth of your own experience, the very nature of the self, that realization will help you to, to purify yourself and get out of the the, desire, the desires based with the self-centered idea. So the, the, the self-centered experience itself, not a person. Be very clear with that, that we, that we have experience. Through the experience, we interpret ourselves, but it is not a person. And the recognition also not a person. It is a result of cause and effect happening in that very moment. And there are many cause and effects already happened in this journey. That's why we are here like this. And then in this very moment, something happened. And as a result of that, we experience this. But when we have the wrong idea about it as uh, the self, or it is me, then what will happen out of that misunderstanding that whatever the, the reaction come as a bodily, verbally, mentally action, it all is going to go wrong way. So as you know, the people, talk about addictions. There are many different ways that we can interpret the addictions. When it comes to addiction, mostly people talk about the drugs, alcohol, sex, and uh, the material collections, the, the bad behavior, that kind of things. And uh, uh, for the medicine, so these kind of things, the addictions. But the most dangerous addiction is our self-centered view. It is an addiction. We addicted to be who we are. Otherwise, there is nothing. The addiction itself brings the repetition. That's why we always say, I want it my way. We fight for that. We struggle for that. And out of that, we bring the personality and identity and we hold it as a so something so proud label. 
but it is a habit. Your identity, your habit, your personality is a habit, addiction. Try to get out of it. So think about it. And we may criticize about the, the other old addictions. And the people talk about it and people try to get out of it and people do many kinds of activities regarding it. But how about our personality and our identity? How you define your passion as who you are? What it is? It is the most dangerous addiction. Out of that addiction, the, all the miseries come to our life and that miseries we share with others. So then, the meditation is a method. The cultivation of the mind is a method. Slowly, step by step, we get out of that addiction. We get out of that habitual pattern. So you have a habitual pattern, which in another way we can call it as ordinary life. And another way, how you can get out of the addiction means that in the very moment, what you can experience is not related to your past habitual patterns. In this very moment, there is something happens. So if your mind able to get out of the habitual pattern or any kind of addiction, and if you able to directly recognize that experience, another way we call it, we come to the direct perception. It called another way sati sampajan. In between your perception and the perceiver, there is no any past experience. So if you come to a point, you will experience something different than the repetition of the mind. So the meditation slowly trying to get us to that level of experience. So then in little by little, this practice when you develop within yourself, that development will slowly take you to that experience. But at the same time, when it comes to liberation or the transformation, one of the most important thing that you have to remember, you have to have an intention need neediness another way is uh, like a positive desire to let go who you are let go that your personality let go this self-centered experience you should have open mind so when it comes to meditation, this open mind means you are, you are ready to let go who you are and you are ready to accept the newness. So, but mostly what happens, even in meditations, we have our own self-centered view or the ideas. With that, we try to observe and recognize. Remember in the deeper level, we misunderstand. When you have a self-centered ideas, so whatever you observe, whatever you perceive, already mix with that self-centered idea. So open mind means you slowly let go that self-centered view. And for that you have to have the the desire to change. Change what? When you sit, at least while you're sitting, remember, learn to accept anything. While you practice meditation, 
don't develop a preconditioned mind just be open in the moment be ready to accept anything willing to experience anything and at the same time you willing to let go who you are so that is a very necessary that the mental quality that you have to develop yourself when you sit so sitting is something and other thing is sometimes people have different arguments about oh for at, to attain enlightenment the meditation no need by listening by thinking by learning ourselves we can attain to enlightenment so remember when it come to the the very transformation or the liberation or the enlightenment there are a few ways it is not a, it is not exact only one way so it is different person to person person to person your liberation your transformation your enlightenment can happen anyway it is it is deeper maybe maybe it can be a new way to attain to enlightenment as you know when you go to doctor sometimes you may heard there are disease they find in this human bodies and they say oh this is a very rare disease and after billion billion people only one person have this so maybe like that enlightenment maybe there are many methods so one method is listening to dhamma and while you listening to dhamma maybe your transformation can happen and another way is preaching the dhamma while we teaching preaching the dhamma maybe that transformation can happen within ourselves and another way is chanting reciting so that way also and another way that the discussing the dharma so another way is meditating reflect on the dharma or the another way cultivation of the mind so out of this all the your transformation can happen according to your development of the mind but at the same time we have to understand the very environment the very condition the we live today just imagine because that as i mentioned that our human body our personality our self experience of our, our recognition we all now come to a point depend as a addiction it's it's the habit so we are we have a habitual pattern now so then in that habitual pattern we mostly go with the the informations and the, the person who perceive information have habitual pattern the person who giving the information also have habitual pattern so both depend on habits so if you depend on habits your change not going to happen so even new even newly born children what happens that way we train them to to develop their habits also so just bring a little example just look at the animals little dog and the cat they used to live with the human for a while you know many many years but just imagine birds like the parrot you bring uh, just imagine you take a monkey or the snake or the rabbit like a very wild animal like a tiger lion 
elephants, they used to live in the jungle. But you bring this animal and put in a, this very conditional human environment. After a while, what happened to this animal? They start to depend on that environment. They get used to that environment and they they addict to that environment and they then they, they, their life become connected to that environment see the same thing happened to us also so that is why that very experience ourselves is we already there and we addicted to our environment. One is our personality, our thought patterns, and our parents, and our culture, tradition, our, na our nations, our country, and our, our world, our religions, our political parties, uh, our happiness, and uh, our disagreements, this all kind of like a habit. It's conditioned by our environment. So then because of this situation, because mostly we depend on information, because of that situation, our mind behave in different way. What is that difference way? Because we always depending on thoughts and ideas. So that, then just imagine when you hear something and if you don't have very clear mind, if you have very disturbed mind or if you have a mind depend with the greed, hatred and the delusion, even the Buddha appear to in front of you. If the Buddha says something, how you can understand it? Because it's very that because it need the the very clear mind to understand that. So if you if you're not willing to to be very clear within yourself, if you hold it to self view. So whatever you hear, you hear it in different way. So that's why, so more than any other time, and we need the purification of our mind, practice to purify our mind. And if you are, if you are really have the open mind, then maybe even no need the Buddha, the seeing tree, seeing a flower, seeing the waterfall or the river, seeing the wind or the cloud, maybe your liberation can happen. So that's why we cannot tell exactly, oh, you have to practice meditation to attain to enlightenment. Oh, you no need meditation. You can attain, you can just listening, can get into the liberation, enlightenment. So like that, you cannot put it to one category. It always depends on the, the person mind, the condition of the mind. So don't go to argue with anyone. And we'll be very clear from where this liberation come, liberation come according to the condition of the mind, not the, the what we listen, or what the what we discuss or the not according to the environment so if you able to keep that your mind very clear then any way it is possible so the meditation is a method and if you willing if you know that you need to purify yourself meditation is a method to to do that so why sometimes the listening is not enough for us, discuss is not enough for us, 
of course it develops the knowledge it is very necessary but at the same time when we listen when we discuss to to communicate we use our thoughts and ideas so your thoughts mean your past experience and when we think we need the words the pictures and the colors so like that things so without that we cannot think without pictures without words we cannot think so all the words and the pictures we memorize we 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 gathered from our past experience so then using your past experience using your past memory how you can recognize something new because then otherwise then already you you should have the the ability to transform yourself then uh, you should have a well, life that to take at least very clear decisions regarding your own personal life look at your, mostly our life and we something we think this is good for us and then after 24 hours we change our mind and then later we we, we ourselves claim oh i made a mistake i thought it is right i thought this way that way so see then how you can make a mistake like that way even regarding your own personal life your own personal decisions why you didn't see and sometimes you saw it before it happened but you didn't care about then later you say oh i knew it going to happen to me i knew i i smell it i had feeling but why you need to go through the misery if you had the wisdom and the knowledge why you should go through the misery to understand that and some people say they went through very bad experience and they maybe they lose their leg their hand and then later they say i got my lesson that is not the right way you know go through failures go through difficulties go through miseries unhappiness go through the war and after that you learn something is not the human way it is a very old passion learning all our ancestors forefathers went through that so you also no need to go through that misery to learn something you are more matured in this human civilizations in this journey so then yourself you have ability to understand something before you get into the misery but still we cannot do it why because we depend on our thoughts we depend on our behavior not with our awareness so that is that's mean you need certain practice with your mind you need to cultivate your mind otherwise you are in this current you go with it so the meditation is a method develop that so when it come to the meditation then there is a ability you can experience something without your past experience or without thinking and just imagine when you see something in that very moment slowly try to catch and digest this you can digest this it's a you know it's a you can grab this slowly if you if you able to just 
use your own intuition so just imagine when you see something right away without thinking just seeing the perception itself bring the awareness no 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 thoughts in between that the perception itself become your consciousness not the men, not the mental formations sanskara or the past experience and whatever you hear that hearing itself bring the the awareness the smell itself bring the awareness no in between there is no thoughts the sin, the, the taste itself bring the the awareness and the sensation or the feelings itself bring the awareness so then just imagine all these five senses when it connect with the perception the perceiver experience it directly without thinking so then how how about your mind in in what kind of level you you will be the very being itself become awareness the very being itself become experience so now how about you 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 increase the duration one second two seconds Five seconds, one minute, five minutes, ten minutes, one hour, and maybe for a day, you be with the the perception, and that itself it become your awareness, and in that level, you are in the moment, experiencing it, it to the highest. and without thinking about it so when you experience something to the highest what will happen you no need to memorize it you no need the memory because you experience it to the highest then what to memorize once you experience to the highest you have no doubt to think about it what to think about it because in the very, in this very moment you experience this to the highest in the very next moment you experience next to next level then all in if you experience something to the highest without thinking there is you 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 become complete with the moment that the in that very moment you you come you achieve to your completion so if this moment complete the next moment complete and the the one minute you complete the one hour you complete then your completion going to be there see how how that your transformation happen then when you experience in that very moment there is no personality there is no habitual pattern because you you always you are in the moment of experience so this is a process that you can develop by practicing purifying your mind so that is how the meditation or there are many other ways but just to to have a taste regarding what you practice i just uh, explain this and another thing is when it come to practice so in the, it it has a very formal way why we need the formal way to practice is because if we go with our own way we cannot get out of this why because we are already in a habit and we are already in a addiction so that's why we have to follow the path so that's why the the buddha is play the role that's why we need the help out of the book 
So then according to the Buddha's teaching, and the very important thing, the very first level, as practitioners, remember this is not going, this is not 100%, you need to do this way or that way, not like that. But if you think yourself, you need some practice, this is a way that you can go. So one thing is the posture. When it comes to posture, there are many meditation, you know, introductions that we can see. Oh, you no need the posture. Anytime when you can practice, there are maybe people no need the posture. Maybe their mind very clear and they, they very clearly get into the perception. But for this practice, remember, you need the posture. Just at least develop the physical discipline with you before you get into the mind. Practice with the posture. Why we need the posture? Because we're going to get into the sensation of inhalation, exhalation. It is not a mental idea. It is really in this very moment happening right now, right here. So to get into that, you need the posture. So for that, you have to keep your back straight, neck head straight in one line, and you have to be comfortable with the posture. If you can't do it, just learn a little bit. Practice yourself. That's why one of the the behavior of the self-centered mind, egocentric mind, this habitual addicted personality, identity means what? I want it my way. So that's why some people say, I want to practice meditation, but is there, is there any way that uh, I can do without sitting? People ask sometimes, why? Because they want it their own way. So the sitting itself is kind of like uh, get out of personality, get out of self-identity, drop all the names and forms and the positions that whatever you hold, just sit. And if you can't sit, Practice a little bit. Like other things, how you practice? Look at yourself. How many things you're capable to do in your life? In your personal life? How you learn that thing? Little by little. By birth, suddenly when you're born the very next day, you didn't do anything. Little by little, you, you learn it. So the for the sitting also, you can do. So give a try. And then once you complete the sitting itself, you feel half of your journey you feel so confident. You feel so comfortable. And the, 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 you start to thrust on the practice. You start to see something beyond what you think. So that's why I get into the practice. And when you come to this meditation, keep your back straight your neck head straight in one line and your right palm on your left. And uh, if you if you more feel more comfortable, you can keep the hands on your knees or like that, but uh, try to, the, the Buddha statue that you can see behind me. So it gives us a mental image. This is called Samadhi Mudra, tranquility posture. So look at that. It's giving us the mental image how to sit and practice. And so once you get into the posture and bring your attention to in front of your nose and your upper lip area in this area. So then deeply observe, thoroughly observe the sensation of your inhalation, exhalation. It is a bodily action. You no need to do anything. 24 7 it it happened always happening it is there only thing is to start to see it and sometimes mind can disturb to that because not only the breathing as i mentioned we have we are human being itself a habit 
our life is an addiction. So the disturbing is a, like a, we have an addiction to disturb to anything. So that's why if you see a beautiful flower, you know, you touch it. Tree, you touch it. You break the branch. You know, if you see something, you look at it. So even sometimes when you go to you know, jewelry places, you know, very expensive item, the, when they sell very expensive items, sometimes the furniture, so it say, don't touch. Why? Because you always have a habit to touch, disturb. At home even. You know, look yourself for how many things you disturb unnecessary. You interfere unnecessarily. So this is a this is an addiction. That's what you have to understand. So don't give a chance yourself for that anymore. It's okay, it happened. But don't don't give a chance anymore. So from now, little by little, get out of it. So then it, it will help for your meditation also. So you start to come to a point to understand and recognize your inhalation, exhalation. So the most of people can't find the sensation and because of that, they get tired and they give up. They say meditation doesn't work. You know, meditation is a kind of like a mental gain. You know, a... a it is kind of like a yeah. illusion, you know, hallucination. So like that, they, they think like, why? Because they can't catch the sensation. So nothing wrong with that because they can't find it. The very reason is this, only three reasons. You know, they, other than that, there's nothing. Maybe other than that, there's karma, but still you can, beat the karma, if you very clearly understand these three reasons. So the one is the posture. Keep your back straight and be comfortable yourself. Don't do very weird things. Even sometimes keeping back straight and the posture, upper body straight, some people can't understand. It. They do very weird things. So don't get into very weird, weird things. Just keep your back straight. Once the back straight, then the second thing is that the uh, once the back straight, remember the second part of it, your head. So don't lift your chin up or chin down because sometimes when you put the, the attention deeply your brain senses and your eyes that the that the deeper current start to flow towards the 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 attention and because of that maybe your head come down and then you miss the sensation sometimes so and because of that you have to keep your chin down but at the same time not the neck you keep the neck head straight and don't chin up because chin up brings kind of like a mental comfort. So don't do that. And keep the chin down and always be remember not to head down like this. And always kind try to find the sensation in front of your nose and your upper lip area. So one is the posture. And the second one is the sensation. So the sensation is not a kind of like a mental imagination. So when you deeply inhale, exhale, you feel the sensation is there. The good thing is the sensation. The second reason, if you can't, if sometimes you start to think about it rather than recognizing physically. So because of that, you miss this and you then start mentally think and the, your mind start to create certain, certain things and then it disappears. So then the, bring the, the mind calm down and the physically try to feel the sensation. So that is the, the second one. So first one, the posture, 
the second one you correctly find the physical sensation and third one sometimes deeply your attention your awareness is not with the sensation maybe it's somewhere else so and maybe mind go here and there so because of that you miss this and then you think oh i can't find the sensation so then remember first keep the back straight and your head and if you can't find the sensation is still with the, your physical posture move your upper body little bit back and forth and then head up and down and find the right place and then keep it there don't move and then physically you be, be, be very clear physically you find the sensation and then see the condition of your mind where are your mind if the mind somewhere else bring it back and settle down with the sensation these three qualities you need so once you have that maybe a little bit you stay then suddenly mind go here and there but still remember wherever mind go don't worry the sensation going to be here your inhalation exhalation will happen that is the good thing so only thing is bring it back and just look for that look for that and don't create something in your mind so elephant in the room and then you look for the footprint outside no just it is here that's it no there's nothing to think and maybe the mind start to go here and there and maybe your personal things whatever happened in life what you going to do these things pop up no reason so don't go with it little by little little by little settle down with the things so that is called that is the the tranquility meditation so in the we have the primary mental object and then we settle down with that calming down our mind tranquilizing the mind and it brings our mind to the one pointness and stay in one point mental with the one mental object and it will help you to settle down all the thoughts patterns and another way it will help you to settle down five hindrances once the mind stay in one place and especially that one place is always in the present moment that the sensation happening and the mind always going to be in the present moment so that is the the tranquility meditation the benefit of the tranquility meditation it will slowly help us to settle down the the five hindrances sensual desires that mean with self centered mind with our eye ear nose tongue body mind we look for things to find the satisfaction so now you not doing why because the mind is settled down with the sensation and the second one ill will animosity bitterness unfriendliness regarding ourselves or something it can happen but now it's not like that your mind stay in the 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 present moment following the sensation of inhalation exhalation and the third one sloth and torpor or the sleepiness tiredness lethargy lazy mind but now you are not like that that try you come to the posture and you are so energized and you awake and you stay with the present moment and you tune to the exactly the the right place and so that will keep you energized and awake in the moment and the restlessness and the regarding that whatever happened yesterday or what going to happen tomorrow or related to your personal identity me so it's nothing to do now you are completely settled down with the sensation and the the fifth one skeptical doubt so now you are not thinking about 
what is meditation this will work how this going to work or so whatever that you keep doing you are not have any doubt regarding your own practice you are completely settled down once you settle down with this five hindrance what will happen as a result of tranquility meditation what will happen your perception going to become very clear 100% why because this five hindrance misinterpret all the perception so but now the five hindrances already settled down and you have no disturb so then whatever the perception happens in that very moment with the your eye ear nose tongue body mind whatever happens and out of that experience form feeling perception volition and the recognition this five aggregates and you become very clear and as a result of that what will happen in this tranquility meditation you come to a point to recognize things as it is so far we experience things according to the way we want according to the according to our habitual mind addicted mind but now you come to a point to recognize things according to as it is and your perception become very clear and now all the hindrance settle down so from there once the mind come to that level you then that you develop the vipassana level of practice so the, in the vipassana level of practice it another way it called analytical meditation you deeply thoroughly observe that what you experience with your own form feeling perception volition and recognition so it mostly inside that what you go through moment by moment moment by moment you can see why because now you already detach from this all the hindrance then because of that this inner behavior you can see very clearly and now you see things as it is and then even your body now you can see as it is why before why how you saw the body no you saw the body as i am now you see the body in a different way now you see the feelings different way feelings as feelings form as form perception as perception volition as volition recognition as recognition that understanding will take you to recognize how things come to be as they are that is the result of the vipassana so the tranquility meditation result bring you to recognize things as it is and once you complete that that completion will take you to understand how things come to be as they are in that very moment right now right here within your own mind within your own body so once you come to that experience the moment by moment what you experience now you see very clearly and then you recognize the very nature of it the very nature of it impermanent it's moment by moment change and it has unsatisfactory nature the misery there is there is no something you can settle down as satisfaction and selfless that what you experience itself not belong to it is it is just happen moment by moment according to necessary conditions 
So then you're not going to claim the experience itself as you. So you get out of, you come out of the self-centered mind. You get out of that the naming your experience as self. You stopping your recognition naming as self. You anymore not going to claim. I want it my way. Because now you know things happen its own way. And we are also result of that way. So that is how this process works. So conventionally, even though we understand it in a certain way as a process, when you practice and experience it, it is totally different. Like everything. Regarding sugar, we can write books, we can give lectures, we can have discussions. But how about when the sugar touch your tip of your tongue? It is totally different experience. So like that, this also the same. So this is the time for us to practice a little bit. So when it comes to practice, always remember, you are your own teacher, you are your own master. So only thing is keep open mind. That means let go your personality, be ready to change. So whatever come next, whatever happen next, be ready to accept it. And at the same time, be honest to yourself. Don't cheat yourself. Don't cover up yourself and give your best for your own practice. Why? Because you are the one who's going to get the benefit. So with that, let's get into practice a little bit. And your right palm on your left, and make it straight in one line. And bring your attention to your body and scan here to toes yourself and say, so papeva, oh, may I be well and happy three times. Deeply and gently breathing, breathe out three times and find the sensation, please. Sensation in front of your nose and your upper lip area. So now allow your inhalation, exhalation happen itself. And when it happened through the sensation of it, just recognize Inhalation as inhalation, exhalation as exhalation. Allow it to happen naturally itself. Do nothing extra. Keep your mind going here and there, bring it back again and again. 
and little by little sharp your attention keep your highest awareness towards the sensation So drop all the, the methods, patterns, techniques just be with the sensation and recognize its behavior, the very nature of your sensation. That is the, the very nature of your whole life and that is the very nature of this entire universe.
Bring my attention to your body, please. Observe your posture. We cultivate loving kindness and compassion in our heart and radiate it as a light to entire your compound, village, city, state, country, world, around this universe. Also as far as you can through galaxies, other planets, stars, reminding yourself like this with clear intention, mentally, recite after me. May all living beings in this universe be well and happy. May everyone be happy and safe. And may their hearts be filled with joy. May all living beings live in security and in peace. Beings who are frail or strong, tall or short, big or small, visible or not visible. near or far away. Already born or yet to be born. May all of them dwell in perfect tranquility. Let no one do harm to anyone. Let no one put the life of anyone in danger. Let no one out of anger or ill will. Wish anyone any harm. Expand the loving kindness and compassion beginning from your heart. Forward. Visualize yourself and send it as a light. To your backside. To your left side. And to your right side. Downward. And upward. to all six directions at once. Like the moon, the sun, spread the light, spread the energy without any condition, without any limitation, without any resistance or without any judgment. Let your heart to shine with the loving kindness and compassion from the bottom of it, with the maximum effort to the highest, wishing yourself, may all living beings in this universe be well and happy.
सब बीतियो वजंतु सब रोगो विनसतु माते भवतंतरायु सुखी दीगायको भव एतावता च मेहि संपदं पुण्य संपदं सबे देवानुमोदंतु सब संपत्ति सिद्धिया सबे भूतानुमोदंतु सब संपत्ति सिद्धिया सबे सत्तानुमोदंतु सब संपत्ति सिद्धिया दम्मे पुण्य कमंगास वक्कया वं होतु सब दुखा पमुचतु so by the power of this uh, good practice may all of you be well happy and peaceful may no harm come to you may no difficulties come to you may no problems come to you may you also have the patience courage understanding and determination to meet and overcome inevitable difficulties in your life during this time period may everyone stay healthy and safe and finally may all of you attain supreme bliss of happiness in this very lifetime and end of the sansari journey may all of you attain supreme bliss of nibbana sadhu sadhu sadhu